Hey guys, Green Zephyr here. So today I thought I would make a video that goes out to everyone who did not watch the same Jurassic World Dominion movie as me. Because there are quite a few of you who clearly were not that observant when it came to watching the movie and paying attention. So today we are going to be talking about Quetzalcoatlus. So yes, um, I made this video a few months ago with a size comparison showing off uh, all the dinosaurs from Jurassic World 1 to 3 and Camp Cretaceous. So it was basically a size comparison showing all dinosaurs compared to each other. And yes, there were bound to be some inaccuracies, but Quetzalcoatlus was not one of them. So anyway, there's a lot of people who obviously know that, yeah, Quetzalcoatlus had an approximate 40-foot wingspan in real life. And that's a fact that we know. But there were multiple, and I mean multiple, lots of multiple, people commenting saying that the one in the movie was not that big. Well, they're saying it wasn't as big as I said it was. I said it was 96 feet uh, for the wingspan. People were saying it wasn't that big, like, you know, these comments here. Um, there's also one that told me to at least use Wikipedia because my information was so wrong. And, I don't know, it's just people who are ignorant like that. I don't know, so... I, they get a good laugh out of me, but um, anyway, so I thought, yeah, we sh I should dedicate this video to them. So, first of all, here is the scene when the Quetzalcoatlus is attacking the plane, and you can see it um, here with a pretty large wingspan, about the same, uh, you know, it's, it's massive, the plane's massive, whatever. If you stretch out the wings and make them lie flat, like parallel to the plane's wings, and keep them straight out instead of the curves and bends that's happening here. It's approximately just a few feet less than the plane. Like, sure, here it's a bad angle and it looks like a little bit, like it looks much smaller. But even then, this isn't a small plane. This is a large plane. So I'm going to show that in a second. So, I mean, here's another view of it on top of the plane. Now, if you look at the front of the plane where the people would be sitting, you can tell that this is not... A small plane like you can see the front and how there would be a person let's say the person is as tall as the plane is like let's say they're standing up even then that's not even half of the length of it the Quetzalcoatlus's beak so that's very clearly wrong anyway so I did um, just to help you guys out here's an image this would be Kayla Watts sitting down while piloting the plane in the red uh, boundary there that would be the size of a person so you look at this, and if you were to have the person standing up, it's a little bit around like half the height of the plane in that area by the nose of the plane. And if you were to stretch this out, that easily puts this Quetzalcoatlus over 40 feet. Like it's nowhere near close to that. Like 40 feet would be from the tip of the beak to like the end of the neck. Like, yeah, I mean, I don't want to do precise calculations right now. I could be wrong, but it's nothing like the real one. This is a massive Quetzalcoatlus. So here we have an image of the approximate sizes from the estimates based on the plane. So the flying box car is the plane model C119 flying box car. And in real life, this the, yes, this is a real plane. It has a 33 meter wingspan, which is approximately 107 feet, I think it was. Um, so yes, that's a very massive plane. And then we have, in blue and green, actual Quetzalcoatlus from uh, real life that we found fossils of. And then we have, in gray, and then this kind of tannish, orangish, brown color, we have two estimates based on the movie. So the smaller estimate is most likely more accurate in this scene, but the larger, ac the larger estimate is the one that most people have gone by when taking the size into account. And they're, yeah, it's pretty much the same size as the plane, which again can be seen with the length of the head going back um, to part of the, like I guess where the skull ends and part of the neck vertebrae start. So that would be about a person's length past the eye on the Quetzalcoatlus's neck. That much you can see it compared to the plane. And then here it's about equal to the largest, um, estimate there the brown one then here um, shout out to velocirooster 64 art for this excellent image 
showing the Quetzalcoatl from Jurassic World 3 compared to Rexy and the Jurassic Park 3 Spinosaurus. So as you can see, much bigger than an actual Quetzalcoatl. Now, this is just the one in the plane scene. This is small compared to the next one. Here are two Quetzalcoatluses sitting on top of the One World Trade Center building. Now, if you don't, well, if you don't know how big that is, I mean, first you can take into account that this is a literal skyscraper that is around 1,700 feet tall. And you can see these Quetzalcoatluses, the one, we can zoom in here a little bit, and its wingspan is approximately the same width as the building. And keep in mind that it's at an angle and the wings are curled. If you stretch the wings out completely and then put it with its back directly parallel to the building, then it is, yeah, it's, it's wider than that building. So anyway, and then I took the liberty of Googling the size. It's 200 feet across at the top and about the same at the base. So there you go, this Quetzalcoatl up here um, landing in the nest. Yeah, it's got an approximate 200 foot wingspan. So that's much larger than the one that was in the plane. And yeah, that's just a simple fact. The one seen farther back with just the head turned slightly, that one would be um, the mate of this one. And they're basically just nesting on top of the One World Trade Center. And yes, this is the largest um, building in the Western Hemisphere. So this is, yeah, a very large building. Like, yeah, you can just see the Quetzalcoatl sitting on top. And they're, the, yeah, same, same size as the width of the building. So that's crazy. So you can't tell me that the Quetzalcoatl in the movie had a 40-foot wingspan because you look at this, and you can see the windows on that building. You can see and you can tell that there's no way that building is only 40 feet wide. That's not how skyscrapers work. And honestly, 200 feet seems a little bit too like narrow. You would expect the skyscraper to be much wider than that. But even then, this is that's the width. So that's the accurate measurement right there, 200 feet. And there you go, Quetzalcoatl, same size as that. And then, yeah, the one with the plane was a little... I'd say approximately around 90 feet, not quite 96, but that was the highest estimate. But if you ignore the plain one and just look at these two here, you can tell they are much bigger than the actual one from fossils that had a 40 foot wingspan. So all of you who keep on commenting and saying that the one in the movie is not that big, you are 100% wrong. They are massive, just like they did to the Mosasaurus. So, and you can't tell me the Mosasaurus was only 60 feet also. I've seen those comments too, saying the one in the movie is 60 feet. Well, guess what? A 60-foot Mosasaur, I've seen a 60-foot Mosasaur skeleton in person, and a person is not going to fit in the mouth of it. It's just, you don't fit. Its head isn't big enough to, to like, fit Zara in it. In the scene in Jurassic World 1, when Zara and the Pteranodon go into its mouth, that the Mosasaurus there has a mouth so large that Zara fits easily inside with the pteranodon, most of its body, some of the wings going in. And you can see those size estimates comparing. And you can see that, yeah, that Mo Mosasaurus would have had to have been like 120 feet or so. You get to Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, and the Mosasaurus is big enough to swallow the submarine hole, the little mini sub that people were in. And when it jumps out of the water and eats the guy in the helicopter, you can see that it's also much larger than when it jumps out of the water in the first movie. You can see it compared to the person and tell that yes, it is much larger. And keep in mind that's the beginning of the movie. Since then, it has been growing because three years later in uh, the rest of the events in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, it's even larger than that, which you can see it in the surf, um, in the waves later in the movie. And by Jurassic World Dominion, well, it has unlimited food supply. It doesn't stop growing apparently and unlimited space to roam. The world is its fish tank. So it continues to grow unlimitedly, just no matter what. And so this Mosasaurus could easily be over 300 feet by the beginning of fall, I mean, by the beginning of Dominion. Like it's just, yeah, it's a massive Mosasaurus. Same thing here, massive Quetzalcoatl. And I didn't include the images here, but you can see if you rewatch the movie or Google the prologue, you can see Pteranodons compared to 
Quetzalcoatlus, and you can tell that even in the prologue, so this is like an unaltered one, just the one that while it was still alive, they decided for Jurassic World Dominion that it should be 100 feet anyway. Because, yeah, you can see it compared to the Pteranodons, and even there, it is way bigger than it should be. So it wasn't just like they made it super big for the like genetically engineered part where they brought it back to life. Apparently in the prologue, they made it that big too. But yes, the one on the building is certainly bigger than the one in the prologue and the one that attacked the plane. But these are just things that you think would be easy to see and figure out from just watching the movie or reading stuff online. But I don't know, people have pro I don't know, they have problems with it. Sometimes they just can't understand simple things like this. So anyway, if you um, didn't know this, hopefully you learned something new. And thanks for watching the video. Hopefully anyone who watched already knew this and just um, wanted to watch the video for fun. I don't know, just hear someone talking about it. But like, if you didn't know this or you were commenting on my other videos just idiotically, just know that yeah, if you hopefully you watch this whole thing and you know now that they are certainly much larger than the real one that you keep on saying was the one that was in the movie. No, it was not a real one. It was supersized. And with that, thanks for watching. I will see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe and peace out.